Hello Linux fans, Rob here and today I want to take a quick look at, and this is not really a review, this is going to be more of a uh, just a thoughts about Fedora. Um, I've run it for a couple of days, it's been very stable and um, there are a lot of areas where I think, hmm, wow, why haven't I looked at Fedora in a long time? And then I got into installing software and, and doing some other things and then I remembered why uh, I don't use Fedora day in day out as a daily driver. Now, I don't mean that in a totally negative way. I just mean it from an ease of use standpoint. And I'm sure there'll be people watching going, "Oh man, come on! You you can set that up to do this, or you can do that, no problem." Um, and I'm sure that's true. But there are much better distributions for ease of use today, I believe. And I'll get into some of those reasons why. Now, this version of uh, Fedora has. Uh, uh, it's a spin with the Cinnamon desktop and what you see uh, on the screen here is your uh, default theme and everything as you launch into with the exception of I've increased the font or the panel bar size and the font size simply for recording uh, the theme is attractive and I just got to say out of the gate that I think the Fedora team should really consider um, using the Cinnamon desktop as their default desktop the two uh, the marriage between the two is very nice Cinnamon works very well with uh, Fedora and it just it, they look natural together. Uh, Cinnamon is very configurable and I'm not going to get into a lot of the tweaks and things but I'll just say you can you can do things like move your panel, change the theme so we'll go into the main settings here uh, just quickly and you can see you can change background. I've got the effects turned off. The fonts, the fonts are extremely nice in Fedora. I'm, I don't know if it's the hinting or, or what they're doing there uh, that's, that's different but uh, uh, upon first boot, I was just very impressed with how clean and clear the fonts look. And I have again, I've increased the size. And then this was default, I believe. Maybe I did change it to. Okay, now I'm now I'm backing up. I think it was slight by default, and I did change that. But then you could also go uh, in and and uh, scale up or down uh, text very easy. And every everything control-wise built into the Cinnamon desktop is uh, very straightforward and and intuitive. So again, I think it's a very nice choice for the uh, Fedora team. Um, where I believe that Fedora and and I want to give just a quick history. So Fedora has been around a long time. Um, it's based off of uh, its roots are in Red Hat Linux Enterprise Edition. Uh, Red Hat is is enterprise software. And I want to say they go all the way back to 96 or 97. So they were kind of one of the, what I called the big three, which were uh, OpenSUSE and Mandriva or Mandrake, and then you had Fedora. And this is pre-Ubuntu days. And uh, so, you know, I've kind of got a soft spot in my heart for those distributions. But where Fedora, I believe, falls short, especially if you're a fairly new user, and you're someone who doesn't like to get in and install software by uh, by building out packages or by terminal and you want an easier route then I would say avoid Fedora based on that now it ships uh, all open source software so you're not going to find software uh, pre-installed that you may find in other distributions like Linux Mint now their package management is through uh, yum and if I were a new user just as an example um, if you go in here and you're scrolling through and you go to preferences or you go to administration there's nothing that really stands out that tells you hey this is where you get software or this is where you add software so from that standpoint it's not very intuitive now if you go down in fairness if you go down and you hover under yum extender you'll find install update and remove applications description in the lower right hand corner so that does help but it, again it's it's not fully intuitive now I will say that uh, the the um, options for software are kind of limited and because of that you'll find quickly that you need to go in and add repositories and the most popular repositories that you see mentioned if you do a search will be RPM Fusion Free and yeah, along with that you will want to install RPM Fusion Free updates. So um, once those are installed, then that does expand your uh, selection of software. You're not going to find uh, non-free codecs and things like that pre-installed. You'll have to go in and set that up. 
So I just again, I want to talk about this. Um, I am sure that there there is still a, a very large user base for Fedora, and while you know, again, I have a soft spot for it in my heart. I see no reason to use Fedora as a daily driver as my base system. I mean, yeah, I I'm fine with going in and installing things through the terminal, and I'm fine uh, building out a package if need be. But you know, if I'm in a hurry, if there's something I quickly need to install or I forgot to install, and I need to install it to get something else done, you know, the ability to go in through you know Linux Mint or or OpenSUSE for that matter and have a one-click install, uh, it just speeds up the process. And I'm I'm guessing that there's someone watching this that says, oh, come on, Rob, you can install this and install that, and bam, you've got one-click install. Well, I haven't found it over the last couple days, so, um, and, and I don't plan on using this as my daily driver anyway, so um, I didn't want to put that amount of time into it. Would I use Fedora if that's the only Linux distribution available? Yes, no problem. I would take Fedora over Windows any day, uh, especially if it had the Cinnamon desktop. Um, nothing negative to say against GNOME or GNOME or um, you know or any others, but I just find that the two together work really well. I would I would probably try it with KDE as well. I have noticed that my fan has kicked on more than normal with the other distributions, and I. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm running a pretty stout system, uh, Core i5 with uh, eight gigs of RAM and an SSD drive. Um, and I, again, I'm not. Well, we could go to system settings here and see what's going on. I am recording, so uh, CPU four here is at 15%, 13 on three, uh, 18, 13, 18, 10. So uh, for whatever reason, I've noticed a lot of uh, uh, fan work uh, with Fedora more so than than others. I'm going to wrap this up again. This is me just kind of, a, a, I guess you would say, a semi-rant or a um, general discussion. Um, you know, for the Fedora fans out there, Fedora 24 seems very stable and if you're, uh, you know, a semi-experienced Linux user, you'll be able to do probably everything you want to do through Fedora. I am not going to recommend it to anyone who is fairly new. I'm going to say move on to something else and maybe come back to Fedora after you've gotten your feet wet in the Linux world. There are much easier systems to set up and, and get running and, and install software on than Fedora. And uh, I would say, you know, uh, just just pass pass Fedora on and try other things and become familiar and then maybe come back and take, take another look at Fedora. And... Uh, you know, I hope this helps if you're a new user specifically and um, you know I'm not knocking Fedora 24 uh, or Fedora as a whole I'm just saying there are better options out there for ease of use and I'll leave it at that I hope this helps and I appreciate um, all of the viewers and the kind comments and uh, and that kind of thing and this has remained really to be a, a fun hobby and um, you know, we'll we'll see how things go, and and just appreciate the uh, co comments, and I appreciate the help that I have seen uh, in the interaction of the comments and 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 different things like that. Where I mess up or I misstate something, then I've had some uh, kind support from from viewers who have come back and corrected things, and so I appreciate that too. All right, that's it, and we'll check you later.